Hi, I'm Laird Hamilton, and this is The American Athlete. No one ever stood up on a board, rode a wave, and went, this really sucks. No one's done that. My relationship with the ocean, well, first of all, it's, I've had it with, for my entire life. And I think it's hard to measure the, the depth of it because of all of the things that it's brought me. I think that we get biological uh, effects from being in, wa in the ocean, uh, you know, and then I can talk about all the, you know, the lessons I've learned and all the achievements that I've felt. So it's brought me a, a, an incredible uh, life. I mean, my, my parents used to say that, you know, that I was a, a, a reckless little kid from the beginning. I think it was something that, that I was born with. Uh, my dad said once that, you know, big wave riders are born and not made. I think that I was uh, predisposed to have that. I, I think if you take, you know, a thousand little kids, there's always a couple of them that are a little reckless, thrill seeker, whatever, however you want to describe it. But this, the feeling of, a, of, a, of succeeding, the accomplishment, but, but you're drawn to that because the sensation of uh, success is so great when there's something on the line like injury. Well, I'm always on some of the foil right now. Just, just my evolution as a surfer. I'm on a prone, stand-up, electric, or tow, but they all have foils. I'm just, that's what I'm attracted to right now. <laughs> that's the thing I think that's most interesting is to, to do what I haven't done. Doing what I've done again to show that I can do it or to just do it again, I think that's a trap. I think that I really prefer looking for things that I haven't done. Very little can keep Laird from going out on the ocean, and that next-level passion has led to key inventions in the water like tow-in surfing. But even he knows just how important it is to keep things in harmony. When everything's good on land, everything can be good in the sea. So when things aren't good on land, then it doesn't matter what's happening in, in the sea. You, you realize that the balance is important, that, that we need that balance, and I'm very conscious about when I'm there, I'm there. And then when I'm not, I'm at sea. And so, I mean, I think it makes me a better man when I can do what I need to do. So I'm a better father, I'm a better husband, and I'm a better person as if I'm fulfilled. Well, Gabby's a great partner. We're very fortunate to be in the relationship that we are. We are both very supportive of one another's individuality. Her understanding of my need to ride a wave is unsurpassed, and I'm very thankful for that. And she realizes it doesn't take away from her, it only adds to her. Um, and I'm very supportive of her and all of her endeavors and, and back her, and most importantly, don't get in her way. Listen, when you have trust like we have, without Gabby in my life, I, I don't know if I would have been able to do all the things that I've done with that kind of support that gives you confidence and it's always good to know someone's got your back and the fact that they're beautiful doesn't bother me either. <laughs> Laird has called his family his jet fuel and his power source. So both he and Gabby use that energy not only to parent but also in business and one of their latest ventures takes a unique look at training and recovery. Well XPT stands for extreme performance training and it really evolved out of our lifestyle and what we started implementing and then started sharing with friends. And then at one point, a person close to us said, well, why don't you just take people through that, that process? And so right now we have two and a half day experiences. We take them through breathing and mobility and ice and heat and, and recovery stuff. And it's transformative. People really, really love it. Sharing his knowledge with fellow athletes is a role Laird has taken on more over time. But lately, when he hasn't been training at the bottom of a pool or surfing 100-foot waves, he's been busy writing a book. Life Rider was a book that came out of, I want to say organically, out of just my philosophy. I had uh, another book prior called uh, Force of Nature, which was a little more on a physical side, and it's probably 15 years old now. This book is a little more on the philosophical side. Um, talk about death, 
talk about life, talk about growing up on an island. And I think people, most of the people that have gotten a hold of the book and read the book are kind of pleasantly surprised just to the, to the depth of it. Um, it's definitely a thinking man's book, which coming from a, a jock always seems confusing. <laughs> so, which is, which I enjoy, it, you know, I, I enjoy that. Like I got a couple of people have seen the book and they're like, wow, yeah, the book was amazing. I was, and I'm like, you seem surprised. <laughs> First of all, never set a goal up that you can too easily achieve because then you're like, hey, now I'm here and now what do I do? I understood that having an elusive goal is great. So then you achieve, but then it's there and you're always, so then you're striving. I think we do best striving. I think that's just how our, we're built that way. We've evolved that way. So you just have an elusive goal that always evolves. And so no matter what you achieve, it's always adapting and modifying. And if you're in that mode of striving, that's a really healthy place to be in life. Just that constant search and, and readiness and all that stuff, I think that we really, that's how we operate really well. As my daughter says right before she kicks me in the leg, always be ready, usually right after. They'll knee me in the IT band and I'll be like, oh, she's like, always be ready. I'm like, yeah. <laughs>